every day I truly miss that character so much I tell you sometimes I could just cry because I'll never have a voice like that again where I can just speak whatever I feel in my heart um, that's the one thing I'll always cherish about that character because if I say it you won't believe it but when Rocky said it it was the truth <laughs> Why is Rocky so inspirational? Like millions of other people, these movies and this character have inspired me for years. The films are like adrenaline shots of motivation. It is my favorite movie. And it's not just because Rocky has a lovable accent or because he gives great speeches. A different character saying the same lines might come off as preachy and we'd be like, Screw you, creepo. But with Rocky, we lower our defenses. We trust him. And I think the reason for that, the reason we root for him, is that maybe more than any other fictional character I've ever seen, we see ourselves in him, while at the same time seeing who we wish we could be. I think one of the ways the original film accomplished this was by taking its time to lock in our empathy for the character. Here's a question. When should a story start? And I mean really start. Not just what the first scene should be, but when should the events of the story go into hyperspace? If you've read Blake Snyder's infamous guide to screenwriting, Save the Cat, you probably answer definitively, page 12. Snyder calls this moment the catalyst. You can also call it the inciting incident. It's when something happens that launches the character into action. We've had a glimpse of their normal life and then BAM! Something happens and they have to answer the call. That book, published in 2005, has had wide-reaching influence in Hollywood because it provided a page-by-page -page formula for writing movies. Snyder argues that we should cut out redundant details that clog up the story so that we can get the catalyst moment to page 12. Well, that is total nonsense. Here's the catalyst moment in Rocky. Would you be interested in fighting Apollo Creed for the World Heavyweight Championship? That happens on page 55 in the script. For nearly a full hour before this moment, the film is dedicated to one thing, making you care about the characters. I've talked about how to create empathy for a character on this channel before, but Rocky really demonstrates how making an empathetic character isn't just about checking some box once and then moving on with the plot. It's a constant process. In that first hour, we are repeatedly shown how poor, alienated, and alone Rocky is. We see his rundown apartment, the fact that he works as an enforcer in addition to being a boxer, that he regularly gets stiffed by fight organizers for his winnings, and that he try to haggle a guy for two bucks. We know how washed up and alienated he feels because literally everyone he meets insults him. Someone calls him a bum in the first scene. You're a bum! Adrian's boss is dismissive of him. Gotten with bad jokes early, huh? Gazzo's driver calls him ugly. Salon, meatbag. Mickey says he's washed up. Tomato. A younger boxer taunts him. I dig your locker, man. The girl he walks home says, Screw you, creepo. The only person who doesn't insult him is Adrian. I don't think you're bum. Well, I'm at least half a bum, you know? To show how lonely he is, we don't just see him sitting alone in his apartment. We see him talking to his pets and to pictures of his family. We see him walking down cold and empty streets, sad and alone, not just once, but four times. Save the Cat says this is redundant. I'd call it effective, especially when your soundtrack is written by Bill Conti. Now, if you were to apply the formula laid out in Save the Cat to Rocky, you might end up saying that this scene is the midpoint, and that the catalyst is when Rocky talks with Adrian in the pet shop, or when he finds out he lost his locker. You can make that argument, but I think it only works retroactively, because I don't think anyone reads Save the Cat and then structures a movie like Rocky. If you tried that, then you'd probably drop a lot of the meaty scenes establishing Rocky's character. That scene where he walks a girl home? Well, you gotta cut that, right? She doesn't even show up later in the movie. So cut this, cut that. You'd get it down to maybe three scenes at the gym, at home, and on the docks, and then this guy would show up and make the offer. By bringing the catalyst up to page 12, you've followed the formula, congratulations, but in the process, you've butchered one of the best stories ever told. Because that's the thing with the rules of writing. It's more what you call guidelines than actually rules. So chuck out the idea that a script needs to hit certain beats on certain pages. Studying the craft of writing is about building out your toolkit, 
to learn the techniques that can help shape your story when it's not working, instead of getting a paint by numbers formula that writes the story for you. Some stories just need more room to breathe. Now, having bad things happen to a character is one thing, but what makes Rocky unique is that he is miraculously able to withstand the slings and arrows of life and still remain a good person. Yes, he's working as a leg breaker, but he still has a heart. He doesn't hurt this guy even though it could get him into trouble with Gazo, and when he sees a drunk guy out on the street, he carries him into the bar. This gives us a glimpse at the man he could be if it weren't for rotten luck. This movie came out in 1976, at a time when anti-heroes dominated the box office. I think the idea of a real underdog hero, of an individual triumphing when everyone else told them they were worthless, came like a revelation, seizing on a zeitgeist nobody knew was there until it happened. We see ourselves in him because he struggles, but we see who we wish we could be because he doesn't let the world run him down. There's one more thing to say here. Sylvester Stallone wrote Rocky when he became obsessed with the idea of a story about redemption, about unfulfilled dreams, and of personal triumph. Because that's what he was dealing with at the time, being an unsuccessful actor after years of trying and abysmal poverty. All of that adds a layer of authenticity to the film that's impossible to replicate, but it reinforces for me why writing needs to come from some kind of emotional truth. Chasing industry trends or squeezing a story into preordained boxes will only guarantee that you'll make okay at best films, not great ones. This movie has been so inspiring to me personally because I cannot watch it on its own. I can't see it without seeing the struggle behind the camera, or how he was so poor at the time he had to sell his dog for 50 bucks, or how he turned down hundreds of thousands of dollars so that he could star in the film. Rocky's story of determination and sudden success after years of struggle is Stallone's story too, and when I look at the film through that lens, it magnifies every emotion the movie makes me feel. But the only reason I care so much about any of this is because the film took the time to make me. I can't even comprehend that number. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. Making these videos is very rewarding, so I hope you guys enjoy them as much as I enjoy making them. I post new videos about every other Friday, and here's why. If you're watching my stuff, you've probably got some sort of creative goal that you want to reach, whether you're a writer or a filmmaker or something else, and the weekend is most likely your best chance to make some tangible progress towards that goal. So I want you to bounce off of my videos on Fridays and into the most productive 48 hours of your week. Let me know how it goes in the comments below. And if you need a website or an online store to reach your goals, then I highly recommend that you use Squarespace. Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace, as you may know, offers an intuitive all-in-one platform for you to make the perfect website quickly. They've got gorgeous award-winning templates designed for specific needs in mind, so take a look and see what works best for you. I made my website, justwritemedia.com, with Squarespace, and it was a totally painless experience. I'm thrilled with how it looks, and if you're someone like me who doesn't know anything about coding, Squarespace offers incredible value. So start your free trial today by going to squarespace.com and and remember to go to squarespace.com slash just right to get 10% off your first purchase. One more note, I was pretty hard on Save the Cat here, but I'd also like to say that it's really just a notion of attaching page numbers to specific beats that I'm reacting against, not what the beats actually are. The book is still a must read for anyone getting into screenwriting, especially for the parts that it is least famous for. So it's famous for the formula and all of the other stuff I find really insightful. His observations on genre and how to create high concept premises for a story are really interesting. So read it, just be skeptical of it at the same time. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in two weeks.